How's everyone doing? It is such a beautiful day, I thought we should make better use of outside on this Tuesday. And speaking of beautiful days, today's video is dedicated to one Madam Secretary Pat Prime, my dear friend whose one job in life is to keep track of which Pearl Jam songs we haven't done yet. And by his request, today we are learning the halves. Happy birthday, Pat. Here we go, let's just go. We're just gonna do a no cut. We're just gonna, I might ramble. I apologize in advance. G. <laughs> You could finger pluck, you could go kind of low, less low, high, less high. I'm a pick guy, so I'm gonna go low, less low, strum. Then A minor. B minor. D. C. A minor. C. D. That's your intro and your verse. Here we go. G, A minor, B minor, D, C, A minor, C, D. The pre-chorus is fascinating. I'm going to show you the chords, and then I'm going to show you how at least one guitar, the guitar on the track, plays it. The chords are E minor, D, C. C, E minor, D, C, C minor, but that's not how the chords are played. Check this out. Thinking about your A minor shaped E minor up on the seventh fret, right? A string, seven, nine, nine, eight. We're going to take just the B string, so the eighth fret of the B string, and the D string, ninth fret out of that E minor shape, and we're gonna pluck from the D string down, so it'll be, isn't that nice? That's an E minor chord with a, well, with a G snuck in there, so it's an E minor chord. So we got E minor like this, eight, nine. The D is gonna be seven, seven, same strings, down to C, five, five, twice, and then it's gonna be E minor, D, C, and then on the C minor, really you just want to pluck that B string and that D string. I hid my pick right there so I could do the crab pinch. Yeah, there you go. So E minor, well, here. <laughs> E minor, D, C, twice, E minor. pre-chorus. I'm going to cut. <laughs> uh, here's my brilliant idea of the century. So we've got a whole lot of grass to mow, <laughs> like a lot. And, you know, it gets old. So I was going to let the tortoises uh, mow the grass uh, this year, move this, you know, to where it needs to be. And I think that it's about 16 by 16, not about, that's what it is, feet square. Um, and it takes them about a day. So they're helping anyways. Right, Terrence? Terrence? That's rude. On, it was worth it. <laughs> On to the chorus. It's very similar to the verse. It's gonna start with G, but we're actually gonna walk down to E minor this time. And the point of this chord, and I'm gonna give you two options, you pick whichever one you want, it doesn't matter, uh, is we want that F sharp note in the bass on the E string, because we're going G, F sharp in the bass, E minor, so you can either play the better man chord, D with an F sharp in the bass, right? E2, G2, B3. Or you can play what's called G major 7 with an F sharp in the bass. You can keep all this G stuff, uh, but we're going to lose the middle finger and just have the E string 2nd fret instead. They both get the same thing done. You choose. Here, here they are together. G, better man chord, E minor, versus G, major 7, E minor, then D, C, A minor, C, D. That's the chorus. G, your choice, E minor, D, C, A minor, C, D for your chorus. 
except for, in fact, that's only the first chorus, because the second chorus and the last chorus, the end of the song, they end differently than that. So instead of C, A minor, C, D, at the very end, it goes C, D, and then the Eddie Vedder move of this that we just talked about in the Pete Townsend song from last week. Um, so you got your D. Then the E string goes up to the third fret. That's D suspended four. And then up to the fifth fret, I can't reach like that. So I'm going to switch my middle finger to the B string, and then my pinky finger can go get the fifth fret of the E string. So E string goes two, three, five, and then a really interesting chord happens. This is bananas, and I'm going to give you two ways to play this, because the way we see Andrew Watt playing it um, live is this. It's going to be the A string, sixth fret, the E string, fifth fret, and the B string, fourth fret. Now, we can't strum this chord, really, because we don't like the D and the G strings in there, so it's more of a, it's more of a thumb on the A string, middle finger on the E string, pointer finger on the B string thing. It's one way to play it. The other way, which I find easier to get to, but a bit more of a stretchy thing, is A6, D8, and B10. And you know, you can do it like that. You could mute the D string there and just kind of strum it if that's your thing. But either way, at the end of that, we hear the E string go eight, seven, before you go back into your verse or the end of the song, wherever you are. Anyways, so we'll be, let's see how I do here. No, this is gonna probably not be very good. C, A minor, D, That chord, I don't know what to call that chord. So we're just going to call it that chord. And that's that chord. And that's how you play all the pieces to the halves. Man, I thought it was going to be like a social commentary song with that title. It's a, it's a wonderful love song. So thank you very much for being here. I hope that was fun and helpful. And I will see you next time, hopefully outside, with more stuff. Goodbye. I know what the chord is. Here, think about just for a sec. Just table this. Think about an A chord um, and a sus4 right is the b string third fret and then the that's the fourth note of the a scale the fifth note would be there um but the flat fifth is there so here's a with a flat fifth for instance that's a with a flat fifth now keeping in mind we're playing a d sharp note or an e flat let's call it d sharp d sharp another d sharp on the g string that's your octave and then if you think of you know there's your a shaped d sharp that's where we are then there's your flat fifth. So this is D sharp with a flat fifth.